Hey guys, Allie Dameron here. One of the most frustrating symptoms that my patients come to me with is bloating and water retention. It can be uncomfortable, it can be uncomfortable to get dressed, and it can definitely impact your quality of life. So in this video, I'm gonna go through what some easy common solutions are for gas and bloating and water retention so that you can ease your discomfort. If you have not hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health hormones, and holistic health. One of the most common causes of water retention is excess salt. We talk about salt being sodium a lot on this channel in terms of minerals, and it's a good thing. We actually want copious amounts of salt, but we also need to balance that out with potassium. So many people are consuming a lot of MSG and sodium and salt products that are making our bodies retain all that water and then simultaneously not eating enough potassium. And so that can really dysregulate your fluid balance through your hormone aldosterone. Also, make sure that you're drinking enough water. Remember that hydration water flushes out toxins through your kidneys. That can drastically help with water retention and bloating, even though when you're feeling that, you probably don't feel like you need more water. You actually need a whole bunch more water, which will help to really flush out that water retention. Another way to really focus on gas and bloating and water retention is to focus on your diet. This can be a really nuanced conversation for many people. So I first wanna talk about the easiest thing and the simplest thing to do for this, which is focusing on not what you're eating, but how you're eating. So focus on how you're chewing. Remember that the digestive process, and this is specifically for bloating and gas, but remember that the digestive process begins in your mouth through your saliva. So if you are somebody who is multitasking, eats really fast, is stressed when you're eating, is constantly in that fight or flight response, is like chugging like big gulps of water to get your food down because you're not chewing it enough, remember that those digestive enzymes are not getting into your food and therefore not breaking them down enough to get into your stomach or while they're in your stomach. And so then every kind of step in the digestive system has to work a little bit harder. So we want enough digestive enzymes in our saliva to get into our food to really start the process of breaking that food down. Simultaneously, when you are very stressed or multitasking or in fight or flight, we also simultaneously do not produce enough bile and acid either in our you know gallbladder liver and our stomach and so therefore that further inhibits the digestive process leading to more bloating less nutrient assimilation which is bringing the nutrients to where they need to go and also less breaking down waste and food and getting it where it needs to be so First thing I want you to do is focus on slowing down your chewing. If you're somebody who just inhales your food, I know I've struggled with that in my own life, make sure that you're chewing your food slower to a nice liquefied state. You will get full faster, you will enjoy your food more, and you won't get gas and bloating near as much as in when you inhale your food and don't get those nice digestive enzymes, bile, and acids in there to really break that down. The other thing you can do in a quick little dirty trick for you guys is stimulate the um, production of your own digestive fire or those bile acids and enzymes by using apple cider vinegar or digestive bitters. So apple cider vinegar, you wanna get the ones with the mother, so like Bragg's, but there's also different kinds that also have with the mother. And you can take like a tablespoon of that before you eat. So you can take it just as a shot if you can get that down. If not, you could put it with a nice hot cup of lemon water or just put it in a cold um, bunch of water with some lemon too. You could also put honey in the hot water um, and that can create like a nice digestive tonic before you eat and can definitely help with breaking down your food. You also can buy over-the-counter products that are called digestive bitters that have a lot of other different herbs in there like ginger, peppermint, dandelion, um, et cetera, fennel. There's a bunch of different herbs in a lot of these different products and you can take that before you eat as well. I like to start there first before I prescribe digestive enzymes because I always like to kind of help your body produce its own things first that it's naturally supposed to um, produce and the either digestive bitters or the apple cider vinegar do just that. Like I mentioned before, you want to consume a diet that has plenty of potassium. Potassium and sodium work together and the sodium potassium pump in your body. And so most of us get enough salt, most likely, but you want to still use sea salt and sodium. I always like to tell my patients to do an adrenal cocktail, which is 
a little bit of orange juice, a little bit more coconut water, and a tiny little bit of sea salt. It's really nourishing to the body and the adrenal glands, which remember that in your adrenal glands, which is your stress response um, little gland in your body, you also produce aldosterone, which is that fluid balance, fluid water balance. So you want to make sure that you are getting enough sodium and potassium. Potassium would be things like coconut water, avocado, cream of tartar, um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, berries, fruit, bananas. Those are all forms of high potassium. Herbal teas can also be immensely helpful for this. So herbal teas like dandelion, stinging nettles, those teas will help reduce water um, retention. So if you have a lot of puffiness, like your ankles feel puffy, your hands feel puffy in your rings, your, your tummy feels bloated, and like it's you know, sloshing around a lot of fluid in there, you could take um, or drink some dandelion root tea or stinging nettle tea. For bloating, you also can get a nice digestive tea. So something with some fennel, some peppermint, some ginger. There are nice, um, even at the grocery store, like Yogi or traditional medicinals makes great digestive teas too that will help with gas and bloating as well. Exercise and movement can also help this a lot too. So I always like to give this analogy. Think about a pond, right? A pond that has no free flowing water in it. It's just like a stagnant body of water. Think about when there's no movement in that water, it gets murky and really gross, right? So our body is also primarily made up of water. And so if we're not moving, our own body gets kind of stagnant and gross as well. So moving your body can be really helpful as long or as well as drinking a bunch of water to really move that fluid through you and get your kidneys working so that you urinate that water retention out. There can also be a whole lot of other reasons for gas, bloating, and water retention. So hormones like excess estrogen in relation to progesterone, if you remember, if you've had kids being postpartum when you had all that fluid retention after you had a baby, that's due to that high estrogen level, which can create a lot of water retention. A lot of women also experience that right before their menstrual cycle. So in those types of conditions, I like to use like dandelion root tea, a lot of liver support, a lot of B vitamins, magnesium, choline, glycine. Those are all really helpful for primarily supporting your liver to get the hormones um, flowing through you better. So I like to do that. I really like dandelion root tea for this. It works just like a charm and can really help detox your body well. There are also other reasons for gas and bloating that are not necessarily hormonal. Those can be from primarily the GI system, something like SIBO, if you suspect you have SIBO, you guys, go to a medical provider and get a methane breath test. You wanna get an accurate diagnosis of this and then you'd wanna take an antibiotic like Rifaxin and then you can also simultaneously support your gut with things like quercetin and L-glutamine and chamomile. There's products that I love that are called like Leaky Gut Revive or GI Revive that I use a lot with my SIBO patients, but you really do wanna get an accurate diagnosis. There are a lot of people out there who are diagnosing SIBO from like muscle testing and a bunch of things. Get the actual medical diagnosis that's evidence-based that shows if you have that methane gas, that's the gas that your bacteria in your small intestine is fermenting. And so you truly do want like an evidence-based approach to this because it will help you so much and get the symptoms really solved. So like I said, SIBO, if it's a true diagnosis of SIBO, it generally um, requires antibiotics and then some extra gut support. Probiotics are not going to be your best friend if you're dealing with SIBO it's probably going to make things worse so everyone always says just take a probiotic but it actually it can be immensely helpful for some people to take probiotics but it either can also do nothing for people and it can also make things worse so I see a lot of people that are like just take one like it would be great for you it's not always great for you so that's kind of a lesson in supplementation in general just because something is magical and their marketing for it is great and it might be great for some people does not always mean that that is going to be the magic cure for you. You really wanna get an accurate diagnosis and figure out what's actually happening to your body to figure out the correct treatment for it. There also can be 
you know, other reasons like your sluggish digestive system, sluggish motility, those types of things can also cause gas and bloating and trapped gas pains, things like that. You also might be reacting to something like a whey protein. A lot of people, including myself, react that way to whey isolate specifically. So if you have just started eating a bunch of new protein, you're using a lot of like protein bars, protein powders, protein cookies, or there's, you know, a million protein products on the market now that have a lot of whey isolate or different protein isolates in there that might be causing it. So look and see if you've added anything specifically into your diet recently. And is it more processed? Those can definitely cause that even though whey protein is amazing for us. And some people do really well with it. Other people, it can really impact. Then the same goes for other types of protein powder. So I've had patients react really poorly to like brown rice protein powder or plant-based protein powder or certain brands for that matter. You may do fine with a whey or a plant-based with one brand, but not the other. If you have recently increased your protein intake by like significant amounts, several, several grams, like, you know, 20, 30, 40 grams, your digestive system might not be ready to handle that yet. And be causing some short-term gas and bloating, you might consider going down and kind of like titrating up a little bit slower if you're really uncomfortable. You wanna make sure, like I said, that you're drinking enough water, you're eating enough fiber. That also can cause a lot of gas and bloating if you're not getting enough fiber and not getting your motility going and having regular bowel movements. So you, this issue can be a lot of different things. Look at your lifestyle and if it helps, you could also just kind of like write down a little bit of a log. Were you stressed when this happened? Were you, you know, did you eat something different or can we do a little bit of a food log and determine like, okay, yeah, it's this whey protein. It's really impacting me or dairy or eggs or gluten. There can be all kinds of different things there. Or, you know, is there something else that just feels like you get it in the morning and it's just going no matter what kind of food you eat and there's no sort of pattern with that. It's just every single day. So I work with patients on this all the time. A lot of other, you know, doctors and practitioners do too. So you really, if you're struggling with this long term, you really want to work with somebody who can help you get to the bottom of this. In general, I think that stress, our eating habits um, are probably two of the biggest things that really impact this and fixing how we eat back to kind of how we talked about in the earliest part of this video is really immensely helpful for so many people. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have friends and family who are struggling with gas, bloating, water retention, some discomfort in their GI system, send this video over to them and hopefully it gave you some good ideas of things to look at first before we start going down a whole bunch of rabbit holes. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, or holistic health. I'll see you guys in the next one.